I really don't think that I knew what it was gonna be like. Thankfully, that's passed. I don't really have that anymore. It's not an easy thing to go through. It's not easy to talk about with people. Are you gonna have another baby? Do you have baby fever? I don't think I'm gonna get to the day balls today. That's just the truth. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a Q&A and I thought that I would also bake at the same time. I'm gonna be making my double chocolate almond butter cookies. This recipe is on my blog, made with almond butter. They are flourless. They're like my favorite cookie to make. I might make some date balls as well, which I have recipes for those also on my blog. But the main purpose of this video though is to do a Q&A and to just answer questions, all kinds of questions. I asked you guys on Instagram um, last week to send me your questions about anything. So I've got a variety of questions here to answer. Some motherhood related things, baby things, but also some health, some nutrition things, some mental health stuff, some gut health stuff. So we're just gonna dive right in. I'm already feeling flustered because I'm trying to multitask by reading the questions here and also baking at the same time. Starting with one cup of almond butter. How is Sadie's sleep? Her sleep, thankfully, is a lot better now from the age of like three and a half months till like a few weeks ago, it was all over the map, which is to be expected with a baby. Um, you know, it's very unpredictable exactly how their night will go, but we had like a few really rough months. Just she was up every couple hours and it's so exhausting going through that. Um, as a baby, like a little newborn, she slept quite great. Like she slept long, decently long stretches, stretches up until she was like three and a half months old and then we we really hit like regression after regression after regression and then like teething non-stop she has like seven teeth now and she's almost 11 months old so anyway her her sleep is she's been sleeping through the night again for the last few weeks which has been just glorious hold on what is next oh okay some sugar you can do coconut palm sugar if you want i'm doing just like a golden sugar here how long did it take for your gut to heal. A lot of you guys know I used to have really, really severe IBS. I've shared about it here on my channel. I have videos on it. So when I think back to when I had the biggest flare up of my IBS, which was in 2016, which was like, oh man, it just was relentless. Um, that took me until mm, 2020, mid 2020, where I really felt like I was pretty much back to normal at that point, I would say. So like four plus years. I have a whole video on how I healed my gut. I will leave that video linked below. I share more about my story and my journey. How have your postpartum periods been since having Sadie? I just put some cacao powder in here. I should probably do the eggs as well. They have been surprisingly so easy and painless. I really didn't know what to expect. I ended up getting my period back at three months postpartum, so much sooner than I thought. I thought with like breastfeeding, it could have taken a while, which for some people it certainly does. They've been the breeziest, easiest periods of my life. They don't feel any heavier than in the past. Absolutely zero cramping. Like I can't even, like it's just like, oh, there's the period, just ready to go. Next, we're gonna put a little vanilla in here. I'm so hot, it's like a heat wave happening in Ontario. It's too hot for being October. Are you still breastfeeding? Um, how long do you plan to breastfeed for? And what has your breastfeeding journey been like? So yes, I'm still breastfeeding. Sadie is almost 11 months. We are still going strong. I have no plans of stopping anytime soon. Um, how long do I plan to breastfeed for? I, um, my plan is to kind of just like let Sadie lead the way there. Now she's always been a fantastic um, breastfeeder. She's nursed really well ever from the start. She just loves the boob. Like she just, so I don't think she's gonna be ready to wean anytime soon. My guess would be, I don't know, maybe a year and a half, up to two years I would be 
happy to continue nursing. And what has your breastfeeding journey been like? So, um, the one thing that sticks out for me is that I did have DMER, which is dysphoric milk ejection reflex, which um, is kind of like hard to describe, but basically it's when the feeling of like latching and the feeling of nursing, especially the first couple minutes, invokes like uncomfortable feelings in your body, but also like emotionally or mentally, like you just kind of feel like, ugh. I just didn't like the sensation of it, I guess, but it would like make my legs tingle. Thankfully that's passed. I don't really have that anymore. That did last for a couple of months, I guess, at the beginning. But overall, my breastfeeding journey uh, really has been quite seamless. I know it can be very, very challenging for a lot of women. Um, I never had that experience though. I've never had issues with my milk supply. Um, so I, yeah, I don't feel like I have too much to say on it because it's just overall been like a an, an pretty straightforward and easy experience. Let's do a little bit of salt. We're looking pretty good. Oh, I gotta do the chocolate chips. These cookies are so good. They're made with almond butter as the base of them. Um, so they're a great source of healthy fats and lots of fiber, some protein in there too. Um, and they're a nice like filling cookie versus just a, um, like a cookie that's made with lots of flour. I'm gonna eat some of the batter. The next question is, do you ever suffer from anxiety or depression? And yes, I do. I have struggled with anxiety for my entire life. Um, I've had generalized anxiety. Depression um, is something that has always come and gone for me as well. It's typically anxiety that's uh, always been like a bigger problem for me, but I've had some pretty significant depressive episodes in my life as well which um, I don't really talk about too much. It's not an easy thing to go through. It's not easy to talk about with people. There's still a lot of stigma around mental health issues. I mean, I think it's getting better. Nowadays, you do see so many more people opening up about it, and it is becoming something that we hear more about, which is both good, but also like sad that so many people are affected by it. Mental illness runs in my family quite strongly as well and so there's that aspect to it too sometimes um, like I can go several weeks feeling quite good like lately I've been feeling really good but for example a couple of months ago I was not feeling very good and was on the struggle bus for a while and was having anxiety attacks like a couple times a week um, and just feeling like my baseline anxiety was high. I started working with a therapist actually a couple months ago and that's been so helpful. I have really positive experiences many years ago working with um, a psychologist, I've worked with social workers, that kind of thing, and I've just always found it to be really helpful. I also got some questions about postpartum anxiety or postpartum depression, um, and if that's something that I experienced. For me, it was more depression. I do think that I had postpartum depression. Um, it took me a few months to feel like I was starting to feel like everything was more doable and even like enjoyable as a new mom. Um, I have found that as she continues to get bigger, she just gets so much more fun and, and all of that. Why did you start living minimally? So, so many of my subscribers on YouTube have come from my minimalism videos from years ago um, and why did I begin? In the first place I had these just epiphanies <laughs> when I was like in my early 20s about just not needing so much stuff against materialism and I went through this like big phase and like consumerism and you know um, I'm not quite that extreme as I was back then but I think the biggest thing for me you know I'm probably not as big of a minimalist as I felt like I was a few years ago. 
Um, although I still value a lot of the aspects of minimalism, I would say the biggest thing that sticks with me in my life today is I don't want to have a whole bunch of things around me that I don't like need or use. But that's not to say that I don't like like or want physical things, like I certainly do. I just, I like to keep things simple and I think life is also simpler when the way we live is simpler, less stressful. My hands are full of chocolate. I need to put these in the oven. I'm gonna have to do two batches. This is what we've got here. I've just put a bunch on the pan and I don't put them as like a whole ball on the pan. I do flatten them into a cookie shape and that helps them to bake in a bit of a nicer shape. Biggest question that I received in this Q and A is more kids. Do you want more kids? When is baby number two coming? Are you gonna have another baby? Do you have baby fever? Are you, what, do you want another baby? When's the next baby coming? Are you having baby number two? Okay, so let's answer that. Truthfully, this is a bit of a hard question for me to answer because I don't 100% know. I, I don't know if I wanna have another one and that's okay. My husband and I feel the same about this. We actually like the idea of being one and done. Um, it's something that has appealed to me for many years. Still though, I, I wouldn't say that there's like a definitive answer I can give you. For me, I think the biggest thing is making that decision as I go along. Um, right now, I don't want to be pregnant again. I can't, like, I certainly not at this time. Um, I don't have any baby fever. I don't feel like I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to have another one. Like, I don't feel like that at all. Will that change in a year, in two years? It might, I don't know. What is the most rewarding and the most challenging aspect of motherhood? The most rewarding would be seeing Sadie like master new skills, seeing them like learn and take in the world and I love watching her play independently and just I love looking at her and you can just see her brain is just trying to figure out like whatever she's doing. Um, but yeah, watching her like grow is extremely rewarding. Being her safe place too is a really rewarding aspect of motherhood. And just knowing that she's like, it's rewarding to know that she's so well taken care of and I think my husband and I do such a good job, I really do. And yeah, I love watching her grow. Uh, most challenging aspect of motherhood, for me, I find it particularly hard, like the times when she's not sleeping well or if she's like up in the night and it's really hard to get her to go back down to sleep or I think just like sleep generally is a very challenging aspect. Is motherhood what you expected? The honest truth, it was a lot harder than I expected. I really don't think that I knew what it was gonna be like to have a baby. I really didn't have any experience with babies, um, mostly just what I thought about them. Um, it's such a learning curve. I'm not trying to generalize it. Everyone is so different the way that they adjust to being a new parent. I'm a first time mom, so everything was so new. And I think just I had a really hard time adjusting mentally. Um, the relentlessness of it, it was so demanding. I'm kind of referring to those earlier months. It feels a lot different now because I've adjusted, um, but she's also a little bit older now and like it's a lot more fun now. And you know what, I think there was a time where I felt ashamed for feeling like that. Like I felt ashamed for having, like feeling like it was hard or feeling like I wanted a break or feeling like it just like maybe certain elements to it weren't feeling enjoyable and I felt really guilty about that but I actually don't feel as guilty about that anymore because I think it's so normal. Oh, I think I gotta take the cookies out. What is something that you hope to expand slash develop identity-wise in the year ahead? I really like this question. I thought it was very thought-provoking and the thing that actually comes to my mind is um, with regards to the th th um, starting therapy has been so helpful and insightful and has helped me to shift my perspective. So a big thing that I wanted to work on, well, was my anxiety. That was the reason why I started seeing, seeing a therapist again. Um, and, but specifically though, is like getting to the source of that anxiety. And like, I really wanted to work through what I know is such a big contributor of that 
for me, which um, is dealing with a lot of self-doubt, um, feeling like, uh, I, I've struggled a lot with perfectionism in my life. I went through some really massive identity shifts a few years ago, actually. <sighs> Just started to question a lot. I started to question a lot of stuff and it really affected, it, made, it basically put me into a bit of an identity crisis. And so to answer the question, what is something I hope to expand or develop identity-wise in your head? I just want to work on feeling more confident in myself again and feeling like I can trust myself and trust my opinions and my beliefs and kind of move forward in a way that isn't so riddled with self-doubt. What is the best piece of advice that I have been given? What's the best that I can give? I have to share this with you because this is what my therapist told me and it was like seriously opened my brain up. He said, anxiety is the cost of doing meaningful work, not the consequence of what you should or shouldn't do. I, for so many years, have been trying my hardest to not be anxious at all. Do not be anxious. If you're anxious, there's a big problem. You must not be anxious. I've come to learn that anxiety is, regardless of who you are, whether you struggle with anxiety or not, it is a part of life that is going to continue to exist at different points um, forever because that's just part of being human. We are going to have times where we feel nervous or anxious or down or bad, whatever. And that's okay, that's okay. The issues arise when we let those feelings hold us back so much to a point where we are just paralyzed and we're so consumed by these negative thoughts, by these scary thoughts, by these anxious feelings, these fearful thoughts and feelings, that's where the issue is. There are gonna be things in my life that are gonna cause me anxiety and it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be there. Sometimes we can feel anxious and, and it can be there. We can let it exist and we can continue on forward. Life before versus after having a baby, what are the changes and the compromises? Time, it all boils down to time. You just like have a lot less time to yourself. Life before a baby, I had like all the time in the world and um, I really did. Oh my God, I really did. But now um, it's like very scheduled, like okay, I will have one hour here, I will have one hour there. At this time, I will have some time there. Is it okay to eat garlic and onion every day? So this person is probably asking this in regards to FODMAPs. Oh my gosh, I need to put more cookies on the pan. FODMAPs, which are different kinds of short chain carbohydrates and sugars that can cause a lot of gas and bloating for really uh, anyone, but especially if you have IBS. And so the question is, can you eat garlic and onion every day? Which are very high FODMAP. Excellent for gut health, by the way because of those FODMAPs, but can cause a lot of digestive discomfort. The answer is yes, you can eat those every day, but it will depend on what stage you're at in your IBS kind of journey, because sometimes we do need to just limit those a little bit and then slowly work up over time. If you could live in another country, which one? I would say the UK. I love England. I really love England. And I've been there a few times now and I would live there. I would totes live there. How did your relationship change with your husband after having a baby? Honestly, honestly, not that much. I married my husband and decided to date him many a year ago because I knew that him and I were such a good pairing and we make such a great team and a great partnership and I had no doubts in my mind about him, ever. And him and us as a team when it comes to being parents, um, I think we do an excellent job and he is such, he has always been such an amazing support person. He's the best and uh, how has our relationship changed? I mean, yeah, sure we have like less like time one-on-one -on -one, I guess with each other, but we still have that time. Um, and we still, we try to make a note of doing a date night at least once a month if we can. Of course, when we were like brand new parents and sleep deprived, 
there were moments where the worst of us came out. <laughs> But I think that's to be expected. I don't think I'm gonna get to the date bowls today. That's just the truth. I was gonna make them, but look at these freaking cookies right here. Ugh, they're so good. They're so soft too. Mm. You don't wanna over bake them. I usually bake them for like maybe eight minutes at 350. They're still a little soft when they come out, but then they firm up, but they're like nice and soft and delicious. Do you have a good handbag recommendation that's not too big and is hands-free for baby? I recently got a new handbag because the one that I had previously, which was a little green purse that so many of you know that you've seen in my videos for like 100 years, um, started falling apart. So I got this like leather brown one that's like got a few compartments to it and it's just a crossbody, which is great. But you know what actually would be a fantastic option that I would like to look into is just getting a small, like a, like a little backpack. Mm. Do you have a protein supplement suggestion? I have a vegan garden of life one that hurts my belly. I quite like um, collagen. Boop. A collagen is a great, like it's a good source of protein, so you can add that to smoothies or oatmeal even, like it's quite tasteless. So collagen you can try. Um, give that a go, see if it is a little bit better on your belly. Sometimes those vegan plant-based ones have um, pea proteins and other things that can for sure upset some people's bellies. Um, if you can do dairy, you could also try doing uh, a whey protein, could be a good option too, depending on what you can tolerate. Nutrition tips while breastfeeding. Calcium is important, magnesium, make sure you're getting enough protein, make sure that you're still taking your prenatal. I really like, for calcium magnesium, I started to take this one. This is Cal Mag Vanilla Liquid Plus. It tastes so good. I love the taste of it. Oh my god. It tastes like a vanilla like yogurt. Um, however, I started to notice, I think because it has xylitol in it, which is a sugar alcohol, that it was like making me a little bit bloated. So I reduced like the frequency that I was taking it, but I really I really like that one because it tastes really good. What is baby skincare that you use? So for Sadie, we've used Earth Mama Angel Baby Lotion, um, like baby lotion, although we don't put lotion on her that often. Um, I've also got some Primally Pure skincare products for her as well. They do a baby balm, which is really nice if she's had like a dry patch. Um, what else? Uh, I use Karina Organics shampoo and body wash for her as well. We don't use it every single day. We maybe only use it once a week-ish. Otherwise, we just um, give her baths with just water. And the last question that I'm gonna end with is how do you stay motivated while working from home? Right now, I'm in this weird flux of I'm a stay-at-home mom, but I also try to get work done when I can. How do I stay mot motivated though? Having a plan, knowing what your day is going to consist of is a must. <laughs> you need to know going into the day, what is even on my to-do list today? Like what are the tasks that I know I want or need to complete? Sometimes even knowing the night before can be really helpful. I use Notion for organizing my days and all my content and that as a content creator. Um, Evernote is also fantastic too. I used them for many years. What was I gonna say? Also staying motivated. Really try to reduce those distractions and try to like when you are sitting down to focus, really sit down to focus when possible. Um, this can be kind of hard because distractions are all around us, especially at home. I also have ADHD and it's so easy for me to be like, well, I'm gonna do this, well, I'm gonna do this, and then I wanna do this, and then I start working on one thing and then somehow I'm not doing that anymore. I think I'm gonna end here because this video, I'm pretty sure, is like really freaking long. So that is it for today's video. I didn't get around to doing the date balls, but I think I answered some good questions. Um, I made cookies. You guys have to try this recipe because these are seriously, it's like my favorite cookie. This recipe is on my blog. I will leave it linked down below. They're delicious. Give them a go. And that's pretty much that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.